What's up you guys? Forrest here with the FOCO Flow Show. If you're new to the channel, we are a mountain bike based channel focusing on the awesome riding here based out of Charlottesville, Virginia and the surrounding Virginia Blue Ridge area, getting out into Maryland and North Carolina. This week, today's video, we're gonna be talking about the top five mountain bikes that you can find for $1,500. And the thought behind this video is that many of you may have uh, gotten into mountain biking during the pandemic and maybe you bought an entry level bike, but now you're ready to upgrade. So we're gonna look at a couple of great options for you to help you get a little deeper in the woods and maybe go a little bit farther and take on a little rowdier terrain. So if you're liking the content, make sure that you like and subscribe, share the channel. We got new videos every week so we can all get out there and find that flow. everybody this is a new installment of the top five bikes series that i've done i've looked at full suspension bikes for twenty five hundred dollars i've looked to direct to consumer full suspension bikes for around twenty five hundred dollars for this video we're going to be focusing on the best mountain bikes that you can find for fifteen hundred dollars so what that means is you're probably looking at a hardtail. In fact, every bike on this list is a hardtail. You're most likely gonna be looking at aluminum frame, but we're looking for slightly upgraded parts from some of those entry-level mountain bikes that many of you undoubtedly bought because you wanted to get outside. The pandemic is crazy and mountain biking looks awesome. Who are we kidding, right? So you bought that bike, you got riding, you got the bug, you're hooked, right? Just like I was when I started riding 10 years ago, but you realize that maybe your bike is uh, limiting you. It's, it's holding you back a little bit, but, or you wanna go farther, you wanna get better, you wanna take on uh, more aggressive terrain. So the bikes that I've chosen are from uh, well-known bike manufacturers. I avoided the direct-to-consumer brands again because they're just sort of a different animal. We're looking at major bike manufacturers and actually uh, didn't really focus on the treks and specialize of the world. I do have one giant on the list. Looking at some of those more, um, they're mainstream, but you know, sort of uh, middle tier, not major manufacturer bike brands that have some bikes that are available. You can get them from bike shops. They're gonna have uh, air forks most of the time. They're gonna have slightly upgraded drivetrains. Some of the Eagle and new Shimano uh, 12 speed drivetrains are gonna start showing up, hydraulic brakes. Uh, and of course, we're looking for modern trail geometry. Uh, I got a couple of uh, 27.5, a couple of 29ers to give you uh, a couple of different options. And the other key here is that all of these, because you can get them from a bike shop, you can start doing some of the legwork, finding some of the shops in your area that may actually have these bikes in stock, or they can tell you when they expect them to come in stock, right? Because that's kind of how I've been doing it when I bought my Ritmo and I've talked to some others that are looking for bikes. You really just have to be in communication. You got to do a little hunting around, get an idea and be willing to try a couple of hours if it comes down to the bike that you want but they've got it in North Carolina instead of Virginia where you live or you know I don't know the other side of Oregon if you're in Oregon but the idea here is find the bikes that you can work with the bike shop they can tell you from the manufacturers when they're gonna be available they can work with you they can swap parts in they can make the bike that you want and get it in hopefully in a more reasonable amount of time than just pointing and clicking and hoping it shows up so we're gonna get into these. We're gonna talk about the different pros and cons and the things that I like about these different options. And then uh, from that information, hopefully you'll be able to upgrade your riding and have even more fun. So without further ado, let's hop into it. Kicking things off, we've got the Giant Phantom 2 for 1380. Giant's one of those big three bike manufacturers that puts out high-end, low-end, middle-end bikes. The Phantom 2 sort of fits right into their just beyond entry-level hardtail with good trail geometry. We don't highlight Giant a whole lot on the channel, but lots of folks ride them. Lots of good industry trail frame building experience. The Phantom 2 is a good looking bike and one that there is at least a decent chance you'll be able to find in stock at your local or adjacent bike shop because there's more giant dealers in the U.S. than there's going to be just about anywhere else. I don't know if I can prove that statistically, but the point being they put out lots of bikes. So do some research here. The Fathom 2 is going to have 27.5 inch by 2.6 inch tires means it's not a full plus size trail bike but it does have enough air volume and width to give you some good grip which i think will be helpful for a lot of folks coming out of their first bike the 75 degree uh Seat tube angle as well as the 66 degrees slack enough to be trail worthy. Head tube angle is a great place to start when you're looking at the entry level to trail mid-level bike. Now upgrading um, the fork 
and uh, brakes and components are going to be the other things we look at. And you can see it's got that giant Crest 34 RCL. So it's sort of that house brand fork. I don't have any ride impressions on that, but 34 inch stanchions is going to be nice and we want that air fork. I, the biggest knock is going to be those Tektro brakes for $1,300 bike. It's a little bump, bit of a bummer, but a good 12 speed uh, uh, Dior Shimano drivetrain should also do the job. So overall in this package, you get a really, really appealing price point. A couple of house brand parts are a little bit concerning, but uh, again, things that you can upgrade over time on a solid frame, solid support from Giant. Here in Charlottesville, uh, the folks over at Endeavor have had one of these in stock recently, so I do think it is possible to get one uh, sooner rather than later. Call around, there's a bunch of different shops and you should do a decent job there to find the ones that you need uh, that can get one in stock for you. Next up on the list is the Rocky Mountain Growler 20 for $10.39, the lowest price point bike on this list, but still good enough in my opinion to make the trail worthy for less than $1,500 list. So Rocky Mountain makes some awesome bikes and the Growler has trail geometry. The biggest thing that you're going to give up is the nice air fork uh, opting for the lower end Suntour XCM, so 34 coil fork, not nearly as tunable, won't feel as plush. But for that price point, you do get some decent specs with a 10 speed. 11 by 46 drivetrain, which I just put on uh, my hardtail from uh, a different bike brand, so that's not bad. And then you've also got hydraulic brakes and a lot of FSA uh, components, which full speed ahead makes some really good stuff. So overall, you've got a good package here with really good modern trail geometry with a 64 degrees slack head tube angle and a 75 degrees steep seat tube angle. So this is a bike that you can confidently upgrade from that just over a thousand dollar price point. Or you could also consider the Growler 40, which upgrades everything for just over $1,600, which is still in range for the price points that I'm looking at. Stepping up to that uh, next price point gets you the Suntour Radon Air Fork with instead of 130 millimeters, you get 140 millimeters of travel. So you get that upgraded air fork that we're looking for. And in addition to that, you also get the new Shimano 12 speed uh, 10 by 50 one tooth drivetrain. You get upgraded Dior hydraulic brakes. You also get a house brand dropper seat post. So uh, some key upgrades uh, for another $500 is worth considering. You wouldn't have to upgrade this one quite as fast as uh, the Growler 20. And best thing of all is uh, I reached out to Black Dog Barks, Bikes there in Stanton and they actually have an extra large Growler 20 in stock right now at the recording of this video and said they expect a few more in in the spring. So give them a shout there in Stanton. Even if you don't live in the area, they'll work with you and find a way to get you the bike that you need. So highly recommend the Growler 20 and or Growler 40 as your next option for uh, that trail worthy hardtail. The third bike on our list is the Kona Hanzo that you can have for $15.99. Now Kona is another one of those really cool brands that makes bikes all over the spectrum from unique backpacking bikes to a steel frame version of this Hanzo uh, as compared to the aluminum one you're looking at here all the way up to the Kona Process Enduro mountain bike that's been on my radar as one of the bikes I might upgrade to one day in the future. For this build you get an 11 speed 11 by 51 uh, Shimano drivetrain. You get a 120 millimeter RockShox Recon fork, which isn't bad, but not exactly uh, as the best one on our list. In addition to this, you get Shimano 410 brakes with 180 millimeter front and 160 rear rotors. You also get a Trans X dropper seat post. And uh, when you look at the geometry of the bike, you're going to have a frame uh, with modern geometry that you can really build up to what you're looking for. With a 67 degree head tube angle and a 76 degree seat tube angle, you really do uh, get that trail geometry that would be great to upgrade over time. But even where it's at, you really get a great build for the price. The, the only uh, miss here is a very small one. The higher end Hanzos have these adjustable rear dropouts that you can adjust to convert to a single speed if you ever want that versatility. So again, for your first mountain bike that's upgraded to $1,500. I'm not sure that's a concern for most, but it would be cool versatility for them to trickle down into this tier build. So again, overall, uh, this is a really cool bike. Reached out to the Crozet Bike Shop, who's local, that has um, Kona in their uh, fleet of bikes. They do have uh, one of the steel frame versions, again, over 2000 bucks, but they do have one in stock, and there is the potential to work with them. You're probably looking at a couple months for a new build, but at least you've got a shop there that can work with you to help you find one in case the Kona Hanzo is the one that you want to upgrade to here in the near future.
Next up on the list is the Diamondback Sinker, which is listed at $1,500. And this, of course, is the aluminum version. And Diamondback is an interesting brand as you can order these direct to consumer. And of course, you might uh, have seen some Diamondback bikes at big box retailers like Dick's Sporting Goods. And then there are bike shops that carry Diamondback as well. So this bike makes the list as a 27.5 inch hardtail with 2.8 inch, just getting into that plus size tire category, which is going to really increase the grip that you have on the trail. So you're going to have to do some research. You probably want to reach out to Diamondback directly and a bike shop to get a feel for uh, where and how you can get this bike in. It has 140 millimeters of RockShox Recon RL Travel in the front fork, uh, 32 millimeter stanchions, which is going to be not bad in terms of what we're looking at at this price point. You get an SX uh, Eagle 12 speed uh, drivetrain, which is uh, good enough, but not my favorite of everything that we've looked at. I'd rather go with a uh, uh, 11 speed Dior if it shifts better uh, with that extra spacing in the gears. And then the nicest brakes on the list with those MT 500. The uh, geometry looks good, 74 in uh, degree seat tube angle and 66 degree head tube angle gives you that modern geometry that we're looking for. So all in, Diamondback has been making bikes for years and they have great experience with the sinker. There's even an upgraded sinker carbon for about twice the price if that is what you're looking for. And you get a dropper post by JD, which is a brand I've never heard of, but uh, at least it comes with one uh, with the internal cable routing. So good looking bike, good geometry, but gonna do some research to see where you can find one. And our fifth and final bike is the Cannondale Trail SE3, also available for $1,500. So I've had a few Cannondales over the years, including an older trail model hardtail from a few years back. This version for $1,500 is a little bit more uh, trying to straddle the line between sort of a casual gravel grinder and like an XC bike, which is a little bit of a weird place to be for a $1,500 bike. They spec it pretty well uh, with uh, the 11 by 51 11 speed Dior drivetrain, but the Tektro uh, hydraulic brakes are a little bit of a cause for concern if you're trying to get in the more rowdy terrain like we talked about with some of these other bikes. That said, it looks to be a really modern geometry, not super enduro by any means, uh, with the 66 and a half degree head tube angle and a 74 degree seat tube angle effective. So when you look at uh, the Canada bike, it's going to be another one that a lot of bike shops are going to carry. Uh, again, so you can work directly with your local Cannondale dealer that's usually going to have a couple of other of these bikes, or at least those bike brands, to figure out what's most available. And for that reason, uh, and because of their long-standing history of making uh, awesome and innovative bikes, you can uh, work and pursue here, especially if you're looking for that bike that you can commute on, that you can take to the trails, you can take your kids out. And for that reason, it makes the list. Uh, as one of the best options for 1500 Looking at the specs, you've got the RockSox Judy fork as well, um, which is um, not a bad place to be, uh, but not the best one on the list. And uh, as far as dropper posts go, you're looking at the TransX dropper post, which is a little bit better than maybe that JD one on the bike before. So all things considered, worth a consideration, but if you're really looking for something a little bit more enduro, this one might not be the pick. But if overall versatility is where you're focusing on this bike upgrade, then this is definitely one to consider. So that does it for my top five hardtail mountain bikes that you can find for around $1,500. Hope you found all of this useful. If you have any experience with any of these new bikes that I called out, make sure that you comment below. Let others know what your experience is, your likes and dislikes, and I'm happy to answer any questions that I can. I've got good relationships with a handful of bike shops in the, the greater Virginia area, obviously centralized around Charlottesville where I live and, and can do some research for you if that's helpful. Again, I am all about getting folks out on the trails and having a great time. So again, I appreciate you watching. If you're enjoying the content, make sure you like, subscribe, share the channel with your friends. We're trying to grow. We've got new videos every Thursday. So really just enjoying doing this for everyone. Passionate about the sport and passionate about helping you get out there so you can find that flow.